Hey, CG Fox here. Let's continue with Maya Modeling Fundamental Series. This is part 4 of the series. If you haven't checked the other parts, the link will be there in the description. In this video, we'll be covering Maya Modeling Tools. This is no means the complete tools which Maya has to offer, rather only few tools which we will be using frequently. If you are interested to learn the entire toolkit available in Maya, I'll highly suggest go and check the Autodesk website. With that out of the way, let's start off with Insert Edge Loop Tool. Before we start using Insert Edge Loop Tool, let's create a box. Now let's focus on the box by pressing F. Now to access the Insert Edge Loop Tool, Hover of the object, press Shift, right click and select Insert Edge Loop Tool. What this tool does is, as the name suggests, you can just hover over the edge and click on the object and it will add an edge loop. If you want to add multiple edge loop, you can come over the option right over here in the left side, double click it, it will open a box, in that select multiple edge loops and the number of edge loops you desire, for example, let's say 4 and press, it will add 4 different edge loops. To access the multi-cut tool, just select the object and press shift, right click and select multi-cut tool. Just like insert edge loop tool, you should be able to add edge loops just by pressing Ctrl and clicking on the object. Where this tool really shines is you can add custom cuts just like this and press enter. This way you should be able to add custom cuts to your model during your modeling process. To add a bevel, select the object, go to the edge mode by pressing left click and selecting edge. Select the edge which you want to bevel. Shift right click and select bevel edge. As you can see it is already beveled over here. This friction value will decide the amount of bevel. So what if you don't want to be a flat bevel. Instead of that you need a curve. What you can do is you can increase the segments over here. This way you'll get a curve. To demonstrate how to use the bridge tool, I have created two simple box over here. You can select both the boxes and combine it by shift right clicking and going to combine. Once the boxes are combined, as you can see, you can select the faces these two faces and press shift right click and press bridge. As you can see the object is bridged. Now you can add subdivision from here or if you want to twist it you can add a twist from here. What if you want to add a curve or an arc over here. What you can do is select the top two faces and press G. G is for last use command. So our last command was bridge. So it will be performing the same command as you can see. But we have a little problem over here. As you can see it's messed up. You can fix it by changing the curve type from linear to blend. Nothing happened. When you add subdivisions over here you can see it fixes the problem. To use the fill hole option, let's create a cylinder just like this and we'll be deleting the top part. To fill this hole over here in the cylinder, what you can do is go to the edge mode, select the edge by double clicking on the edge, press shift, right click and select fill hole. As you can see, it has fill the hole which we have created before.
Now let's take a look at poke option. To access the poke option, you can just select the face over here and select the face. Go to mesh, edit mesh and select poke. What this will do is, this will connect all the edges to a single point just like this. This will be very handy when you are using fill hole and you have a lot of end guns. What we usually do is while modeling we try to avoid end guns. We will try to keep the model only in chords and triangles. So this way you will be able to fill a hole without getting an end gun. Now let's take a look at how you can extrude a face. To extrude a face, select the object, go to the face mode, select the face, shift right click and select extrude from here. The shortcut for extrude is Ctrl E. Here you have different options like the thickness, offset and the subdivisions. To use the merge vertex tool, you can select the object, go to the vertex mode, select the vertexes, press shift right click and merge vertex. This option over here, it depended on the threshold right over here. If you increase the threshold like this, you can see it merges the vertex right over here. The other option over there is if you select two vertexes like these two and press shift right click and select the vertex merge vertex to center what this will do is this will merge the vertex right in the center just like this we have one more option over there is target weld what this will do is with this you can target the vertex which you want to weld and to which vertex you want to weld to. You press shift right click select target weld select this vertex and weld it to this one. Now let's take a look at duplicate special option. I have a scene open over here where I have half the car model. So usually when we model, we'll be modeling half of the model, then we'll be duplicating the other side. So to do that, we'll select the object which you want to duplicate to the other side and press Ctrl G. That will group the object and place the pivot point right in the center. Then we'll go to edit. Duplicate special, click on the small box over here. And here, whichever side you want to duplicate it, click over here. In our case, it's x axis, and press negative 1 and press apply. So here we have two different options one is copy, which will basically make a duplicate right over here, and the other one is instance. What instance will do is, when we make a change in one side of the object, it will automatically update the other side, just like this. So instead of instance, if you press copy, what that will do is, that will be independent to that particular side. For example, if you make a change over here, this won't get updated in the other side. We will be constantly using duplicate special during our modeling process. We will be making half of the model and duplicating the other side. 